What's up everybody? Today we're gonna take a look at a couple different running shoes that I've been in for a little while. Gonna give you a quick review on each one of them. So we've got the Hoka or Haka one. I have no idea how you say that actually. Uh, Challenger ATR5. We have the Noble Runner and I've got the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast 2 to talk about today. So the first one we're gonna attack is the No Bowl Runner. And so if you guys remember the last shoe review I did, I basically picked three categories that I really focus in on when I'm looking at a CrossFit shoe or a gym shoe. So I'm gonna do the same thing today for a running shoe. We're gonna look at the durability, the stability, and then again, the flexibility of the shoe in terms of running. Those are the big three things that matter to me when I'm running in a shoe. So for the No Bowl shoe, stability is what we're gonna start with, some of the bad. I'm gonna give it about a four out of 10. Um, this upper material does not keep your foot where you want it to be unless you are just doing straight road, road running uh, in this shoe. Um, I think the look of it is actually really cool. All the runners look really good. Um, the way that they blend the different colors, that kind of thing. I'm not a huge on like uh, massive like logos written across the side or massive uh, words written across the side. So they kept that to a minimal just on the back. So I like that. But the uh, stability of this one, I can always feel my foot kind of pushing out the side. You can see how easily I can just kind of push my hand over and that side just folds over onto the side of the shoe. If you have a wide foot at all, this is not the shoe for you. Okay, it's a narrow toe box to begin with. And if you have a wide foot and any kind of uh, unevenness of the road or you jump on any kind of uh, rocks, gravel, uh, off-roading would definitely not recommend in this one either um, just because this upper is not super tight. All right, It does cinch down pretty well even for being a fairly uh, uniform upper in terms of like a sock. The, the laces do cinch down on the foot nicely so it does fit snug um, but just this upper is not quite uh, durable enough in terms of this shoe, and are not durable, not stable enough to keep your foot in place while running. So I definitely wouldn't use it as a track shoe, definitely wouldn't take it off road, cutting, agility, anything like that, stay away from in this one. But if you're just open to uh, some road running, uh, this could be a great shoe for you. Another reason that stability is gonna be an issue is because you can see it's super tall. So you're sitting pretty high off the ground in this, right? Um, it's not close to the ground which also does give you a maximum amount of cushioning, uh, but the cushion is actually pretty firm. So again, it's a firm platform that you are that's pretty high with a uh, not so rigid upper, which just means again to me that my foot kind of slides around quite a bit, um, any kind of unevenness in the road. And so on the stability, giving that a four out of 10. Durability, I'm actually gonna give these an eight out of 10 on durability, but that comes with one little asterisk. Keep them where they're meant to be. Uh, like I mentioned before, keep them on the road, keep them off the trails, don't do cutting or anything like that. This shoe's gonna last you a long time. Um, I like the, uh, the outer, or excuse me, the, the outsole on them is nice and firm. You can feel this stuff's pretty tough. Um, I've put down some pretty good miles in these and I don't see a whole lot of wear anywhere. So uh, that's pretty impressive on the outsole that I like. Um, but again, same kind of thing. Keep them where they're meant to be and this will be a durable shoe and it will last you a long time. But I think the minute that you start taking this where it's not meant to be, you're gonna run into a whole bunch of problems both in just your running experience and then the longevity of the shoe. So durability, keep it where it's meant to be, eight out of 10. Last but not least, flexibility. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. And that's not necessarily a bad thing for a road running shoe, specifically something with this amount of cushion in it because you're probably looking to go a little bit more long distance. Like I mentioned before, these aren't really for sp sprints, but the flexibility, I'm gonna give about a seven out of 10. Um, it's pretty stiff in terms of rolling that toe up and letting your foot do what it wants to do. But at the same time, you do have this nice cradle here. So where the toe kind of uh, points up at the end, that's gonna allow the foot to kind of roll from the midfoot forward naturally. Okay, so flexibility becomes less of an issue when you have a sole that's made that way or that forms that way while you're running in it. So I'm gonna go about a seven out of 10 on the flexibility. Next one we're gonna do is the Reebok Float Ride Run Fast. Two, now let's go over the exact stated purpose for this shoe. This is a track shoe. This is a more of a sprinting shoe or a race day shoe for like 5K, something like that. This isn't necessarily gonna be your shoe that you're gonna be hammering out daily miles in um, just because of the lack of cushion here. Uh, what cushion there is, it's nice and squishy, but let's not talk about that first. Let's get into our big three. Stability, I'm actually gonna give this a seven out of 10. 
It's got a super lightweight upper, but the materials that it are made of are fairly stiff and actually where the Reebok vector is, is some nice reinforcement there. Um, I've done some sprinting, some cutting, some turning, uh, especially on the Assault Runner as well. And these, at my foot feels super stable in here. I would also attribute that to the lacing system. Remember, it splits open here. It's not that one piece sock feel, so it really does cinch down tight at the top. So I am really good with a seven out of 10 for stability on a shoe that is not really meant to be very stable at all. Durability, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a seven and a half to eight out of 10, again. Um, one, because I've beat on them pretty hard, uh, done some hard sprinting in them, all those kind of things. Usually if you're running around track corners and those kind of things, when you sprint, you have to worry about the outside of the shoe here. Your foot's gonna wanna push to the outside, punch holes in a really thin material if you're running in a really lightweight, thin upper shoe. But this thing's held on really well. It's held up really nice to all of the little bit of abuse that I could give to it. So I'm pr pleasantly surprised with that for it being more of a track shoe, more of a sprinting shoe. So I'm gonna go with a seven and a half out of 10 for this shoe. Flexibility is gonna be the Run Fast 2's high point, right? Um, it actually bends pretty easily. You can torque, twist around the shoe a lot easier than some of these other ones. And that's basically because it's made for that, right? Um, you lose a little bit of that stability. You definitely lose a little bit of that cushion for sure because it's capable of those things. And again, this is purpose built for speed. It's named the run fast for a reason, okay? So if you're looking for something that um, you wanna do like a race day 5K shoe that you can hang on to for years on end or a, a specific track shoe that you can have where you're looking to do a little bit more speed training um, it's something that's, you know, it's going to be a one-time purchase for one to two years if you're not hitting the track that often and you're not doing sprints that often. So not a bad investment if you're kind of more into that training, more the interval sprint type training. Uh, this is going to be the shoe that you want to gravitate towards. Last but least, we're going to talk about the Hakka One Challenger ATR5. So this is going to be kind of the Cadillac of the three of these shoes. Now there's a couple reasons for that, but let's run down the big three out the gate. Durability, I'm gonna go straight to nine out of 10. And that might be a little bit unfair to these other two shoes because this is an all-terrain shoe. This is a running, hiking shoe. Look at the lug pattern on the bottom. It's meant to be outdoors. It's meant to be beat up. It's purpose built for that. So that's an easy nine out of 10 for this bad boy. Um, I took it on a backpacking trip with Pat Sherwood recently. It got torqued all over the place. Um, hiking up rugged hills, going over rocks, streams, uh, my foot not being on stable ground as well as wearing an additional 30 to 40 pounds on my back so all those things weigh into what happens to the shoe when you take a misstep when you're on uneven terrain this thing held up like a champ um, I kind of expected potentially to pop out on the side something like that never happened um, all of it stayed well intact so durability easily 9 out of 10 stability we're gonna go with an 8 out of 10 seven and a half to 8 out of 10 reason being is that it still does uh, this this upper is nice and lightweight. There's Gore-Tex lining on it, which is probably why they kept the, the upper a little bit more lightweight so your foot can actually breathe a little bit more. They didn't want super heavy or aggressive materials on here. Um, but you will notice when you're doing some trail running, the, the foot can kind of pop out over on the side. Again, you can kind of see if I push hard enough with my hand, it can kind of bleed over just a little bit, not nearly as much as this. So it is more stable than that. And for sure, the Meta Rocker system on the sole helps the stability a ton. It helps keep your foot where it needs to be. We're gonna talk about that next, actually a little bit more with flexibility, but in terms of stability, did my foot feel stable where it was at while I was hiking, running in these? Um, that's a seven and a half, eight out of 10 for sure. Really felt locked down solid in this shoe. Flexibility, now the flexibility test that I typically use on a shoe is just grabbing it by the toe here and then slowly pushing up and how much pressure do I have to use, right, to kind of bend at that toe. That usually tells me how flexible the shoe is gonna be in terms of a running sense, in terms of what I like in a shoe when I run. And there's a lot of effort into bending that toe up. So if I were to base it just off of that test, I would give it a five out of 10 because this thing is super, super stiff. But again, that's purpose built off-road shoe, it's supposed to be a little bit more stiff, kind of the reason that it's in there. Um, but at the same time, it's almost a non-issue because of the way that they build the soles of these shoes. So um, the Meta Rocker system is basically, think of it like a wheel on the bottom of your foot. It really guides your foot as to where it needs to go on every single stride. And because of that, they can make this sole actually fairly stiff or make the shoe a little bit more rigid but every time it hits that rigidity, it's moving in the direction that you want it to go. It's, it's designed that way, it's engineered that way, so that your foot goes to the, in the right direction every time it hits the ground. So your foot doesn't really have to 
fight for position, right? The shoe's gonna naturally take you there. Obviously that's something that they're known for. So the huge amount of cushion is another thing. If you look at any Haka One shoe, uh, road running, trail running, uh, walking around, hiking, they're gonna have this big beefy amount of cushion which is incredibly comfortable on the foot. Uh, like I said, did a multi-day backpacking trip in these. My feet never felt better. Um, I'll probably never go back to a boot or I will look at getting their boot version of this shoe because of that. Um, but. The fact that it's so rigid or able to be rigid aids to that stability factor and then the flexibility of the toe is actually a non-issue um, because of how they designed the shoe itself. So that's their thing you're going to find all across every one of their shoes on the platform. If you're doing log and miles like trying to get in you know, 10, 20, 30, 40 miles a week and you're doing easy miles just going out and running long distances, definitely look into this company for the shoe. And I say that for a couple reasons. Uh, one, because of that rocker system, and two, it's gonna preserve your calves, preserve your Achilles, make things easier on your knees, your hips, all that good stuff that you wanna look for in a well-engineered, well-designed shoe. Thank you guys for tuning in on the shoes. If you got any questions about them, throw them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. If there's any other pieces of equipment you wanna see reviewed, we'll get it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed it, hope you found it valuable, and we'll see you next time.